Well, for some of the stories that are out there, I would say I'm not who some of you think I am. Uh, I'm a searcher. I'm a deep thinker. Uh, I love to, uh, to learn. I love to challenge myself, to go deeper, to stand in the uncomfortability of life and see what my new edge can be. Um, I'm interested in a lot of different things. Um, obviously, I, you know, hosted Jeopardy. I've uh, done ayahuasca. I've uh, played football for 18 years. You know, it's it's I have kind of all over the place. But um, you know, I don't have it figured out by any means. But I'm searching. I'm looking. I'm listening, and trying to figure out uh, the best path for me. Trying to do it with as much authenticity as possible. Enough in, uh, as much integrity as possible and, and uh, but I'm learning I think I'm you know always making mistakes trying to learn from my mistakes trying to grow trying to expand my uh, horizon trying to find my community uh, trying to hone in on those really important people in my life and pour into those people surround myself with great people but uh, just learning learn as I go making mistakes picking myself up trying to do better next time great job to his team yeah. um, getting this done I am surprised. I am. <laughs> you know, we're talking about a guy, you know, that's, what is this? He just finished up year three? I, I believe so. Yeah, year three. Three? A, a lot of times when you still get years left on your deal, you're going <coughs> to enter into a team-friendly deal, right? Mm -hmm. right. Um, they didn't do that. They said, this is our guy. Um, he's the face of our franchise for years to come, and we're not going to play with him. So I am shocked that he got what he got, okay? Um, and it sucks because I want to celebrate Jalen. I want to celebrate the Philadelphia Eagles and Howie getting it right. Howie is just a – he just gets it. He's, he's phenomenal. I mean, he can win executive of the year or, or general manager of the year every single year. He figures it out. Mm -hmm. The dude is nice, all right? But I can't really celebrate Jalen right now. It just makes me think about Lamar Jackson. You know, like, no, Lamar didn't make it to a Super Bowl, but it's Lamar Jackson. No, Lamar Jackson, you know, didn't have the year that Jalen just had, but he won an MVP a couple years ago. Yep. How do you get this wrong? Mm -hmm. And I think what they offered him was right around, like, $45 million a year, right? So you got Lamar Jackson sitting on one side of the table where they're, they're, they're offering him $44, $45 million a year. And then you have Jalen finishing his third year and getting 51. So um, it makes me wonder why Baltimore uh, is playing. And it makes me think about uh, Lamar Jackson. And um, I don't know. I'm still, like, sitting on this. I don't know if this helps Lamar or hurts Lamar. <laughs> um, I'm not surprised that they paid him. You know, they're fresh off of a Super Bowl appearance. Um I kind of expected it to happen sooner rather than later. Um, they're also an organization, to their credit, that seems to value their guy. And we talk about this all the time, you know, when we speak about agents, or at least I've brought this point up. An agent can only negotiate what an organization sees your worth as. What I mean by that is they can't implement a worth that the organization doesn't see. The Eagles already see a worth in Jalen Hurts. It's it's there. You know, he brought them to a Super Bowl. They're coming off an incredible season. You know, they value him. So it was easy to play ball with them when it comes to the negotiating table. That's the complete opposite of what's going on in Baltimore. For whatever reason, the Ravens don't see the value in Lamar. So I can confidently say that Aaron Rodgers won and the Jets won this trade. Mm. Now, you started this whole thing off by talking about Aaron Rodgers. You said, okay, this is what Aaron Rodgers said. This is what Aaron Rodgers is doing. Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers. Why aren't we talking about Brian Gutenkus? Mm -hmm. Like, Brian Gutenkus, you are on the clock. And I'm not talking about the draft starting on Thursday at 8 p.m. I'm talking about you have nine months to show that the move that you made three years ago was worth it. Because three years ago to this day, if you actually go back, you would know that one of his first moves, his biggest moves, was giving up a first-round pick for Jordan Love. Do we not remember that? 
That's what started all of this. So for him to go out there and say, well, I would like to have talked to uh, uh, Aaron Rodgers and, and work this out with him. No, bro, this is all on you, bro. You got nine months, you're on the clock. If you don't get this done, if your experiment goes wrong, you are out. And when I say out, he should be out of the NFL for good, especially at the general manager spot. We'll give you a scouting position. <laughs> but nobody else give him the keys to the whole building. Nobody else let him be the decision maker. Because you made the worst decision probably, or I would say a top five, uh, a top five worst decisions in all of sports. You don't come in and try to get rid of Aaron Rodgers. He was coming off of 26 touchdowns and four interceptions in 2019. You draft him, you give up a first round pick, and why is that a big deal? Because if you have Aaron Rodgers, go get him help. He needed a corner that year. Mm -hmm. He needed a safety. He needed a defensive tackle. He needed a linebacker. He needed a playmaker at wide receiver. Help the man out, but you go get a quarterback that's going to sit there. And he sat for three years. Mm -hmm. Jordan Love sat for three years. What happened? Aaron Rodgers went back-to-back -back MVP. Now, last year, 3,600 uh, uh, 3,600 yards, 26 touchdowns, and, and, and 12 interceptions. Not as great as year. Some would say it's his worst year. Mm. I would say that. But this is Aaron Rodgers. You don't go out there and do that. So now, not only do you have uh, 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 Jordan Love taking over, but you also have until this spring to make a decision on his fifth-year option, and you haven't even seen him really lead the way. All you saw was last year when Aaron Rodgers was on another wellness retreat somewhere in Hawaii playing the guitar. You had uh, 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 Jordan Love leading the, the whole offseason. So that's really your your sample size with, with, with Jordan Love. Yeah. So uh, we can talk all we want about Aaron Rodgers. We can talk all we want about the New York Jets. But let's also make sure that we give uh, Brian Gutenkus his 15 minutes of fame. Because this might be it for him. I get that part, but I think also you can't blame the Packers for start to start thinking, for starting to think about the future, and that's what they did with Jordan Love. Now, whether or not that was transparent in their conversations with Aaron Rodgers is a different conversation, but this happens. It happened with Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers. It's happened with quarterbacks throughout the history of the sport. You start thinking about the future. Now, was it a little... Um, ahead of the curve maybe they probably didn't need a quarterback at that moment at that in that specific draft but it was gonna happen eventually so I don't know if you can really like bash the Packers completely for starting that trajectory of okay what is life gonna look like post Aaron Rodgers now you can maybe bash them for the timing of it but you can't bash them for thinking about it but in terms of, but we can bash them though. I mean, but we can bash them. If you were still on the Chicago Bears, and I was interviewing you, and I said, Brandon Marshall, who's the better quarterback, Aaron Rodgers or Jay Cutler? Who would you say? <laughs> yeah. I would say you look. <laughs> but you gotta go with your teammate, Brandon. All right, all right, let me get you. Let's let me let me role play right here. Okay, right, you Brandon ready? Marshall, Boom. welcome to the show. Um, yep, just want to kick things me. off with something light real quick. Better quarterback, Aaron Rodgers, or your quarterback, QB1, Jay Cutler? Well, first off, Ashley, before I answer that question, I just want to say I'm a big fan of yours. I really appreciate you having me on the show. Uh -huh. It is a true honor. Um, but to answer your question, I would say, look, 2006, I shared this year with Jay Cutler, right? And this is one of the, probably the most important, one of the biggest moments of our life. We were drafted uh, not only the same year, but to the same team, right? Mm. He went first round, then we took Tony Shuffler in the third, um, then they came around and took me in the fourth. And ever since that moment, right, like we, 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 we created this, this unbreakable bond, no matter what we go through, the highs and lows, it doesn't matter. Interceptions, drop balls, it doesn't matter. That's my guy. You remember T.O.? Remember T.O. came out, Tony Romo, that's my quarterback. Mm -hmm. that's, my qu that's my quarterback. That's my quarterback. I'm going to war with Jay Cutler over anybody else. Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, Patrick Mahomes, don't matter. Dak Prescott, Lamar Jackson. You can bring Joe Montana back, Joe Burrow. I don't care. I'm rocking with Jay Cut. Mm -hmm. That's who I'm going with. So you're taking Jay Cutler over Aaron Rodgers. I want to clarify that for the viewers. 
I said what I said. There you go. Okay. <laughs> no, you but hold on, hold on, hold on. Time out. Let uh -huh. me say this, though. No, Ashley, this is true. This is a true story. So <laughs> he tricked me. <laughs> Dave Cutler <laughs> tricked me. He tricked me. So <laughs> 2014, I want to say, I had one more year left on my deal. Just came off of an all-pro year, 1,500 yards, 14 touchdowns, something like that. It was, it was a wild year. Um, go up there to to our guys, Phil Emery. I'm like, yo, let's 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 look at a, an extension. So we worked through an extension, right? Or we were working through an extension. That offseason, when I tell you, right, that Jay Cutler, I was saying it publicly, it's like, oh, he's gonna be MVP uh, uh, of the league next year or this upcoming season. Spectacular. Not only what he was doing on the field, because we always saw him make all the throws and he was extremely special there. But the way he was leading, like he was running the show. And then we also had an amazing dinner, right? And this one we took Alshon Jeffrey. So maybe it was a year before. And we went to Mastro's and we just he and I sitting in ourselves. And he had two, we had two bottles of wine. We finished the whole, um, the whole uh both bottles of wine, and we were watching a draft. And he said, here's my goals. And he rolled it out. And then he followed that up with the amazing offseason. So anyways, we get through it, right? Uh, we get through that moment. Then we're sitting there trying to get my deal done. And it's not getting done. It's taking a lot longer than it should have. And then the New England Patriots call. And they're like, yo, we want to trade for them. And they'll pay. They'll, they was going to pay me. So I had an opportunity to pick between Tom Brady and Jay Cutler, and I picked Jay Cutler, and then Damn. that year we imploded. So. Mistakes happen every day, that's, B. Hey, yo, that's tough. Players, players mess up too. You know what I'm yo, saying? That's tough. That's tough. I know. It happens. Know. Even Jordan like missed Corey. a couple I'm like shots. Corey. You know? I'm like Corey. In oh. retrospect, I wouldn't change it for the world, of though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It made me who I am today. There you go. What's your answer to your own question, uh, Corey? Oh, I'm so glad you asked me. I'm so <laughs> glad. Say, yeah. yeah, I'm so glad you I asked me. I mean, he's going to say Miami. I'm going <laughs> to say New York. Look, because, <laughs> look, the, the Heat fan in me wants to say absolutely nothing, right? But, like, if we're talking about X's and O's and whatnot, I think what the Heat should be worried about is Jalen Brunson, right? I, I personally think he's the only real scoring option the Knicks have. If we being honest, do you not see Josh Hart light them up? Josh Hart, how much did he average in this past series? Uh, I want to say twenty. No, 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 no more than eleven points. But not only that, but he's on the boards. Can we get no, that fact no, checker? No more, no more. <laughs> not only that, but he's on. He he also. If you yeah. want to go ahead and count his offensive rebounds as right, points, right. I mean, and, he's and on those boards. And that's the other key. I mean, you are, you said the other key. We just need to limit those extra possessions. Don't let her right? push you around. Uh, oh no, she won't. She won't. She Robinson, is right now. Ro like, how, how? 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 I'm not Robinson. pushing him around. I'm just no, saying. No, no, no. So so what? What the Knicks do really well is offensive rebound. And that's not really a st statistical category you want to be good in because that means you're missing shots, right? Mm. They're going to have to hit shots against the Miami Heat. I could tell you that, right? So, Corey, if the Heat, Corey won. What's that? Offensive, show? Hold offensive hold on, hold on. rebound that turn into points. ESPN where they give people is the that, points. Yeah, not only that, right, right, right. not Corey only has that. Two, Corey yeah, has yeah, two. Yeah, yeah. But if you go one. ahead and look, yeah. if you go ahead and look at the numbers, though, a lot of our offensive rebounds have turned into second chance points. Right. And right. not only that, but the turnovers are on the other team where yeah. have a higher percentage of turnovers goes into points on our end. I think, Dude, and, two, and, I two. think and I think Miami, if they, I think that's not something really hard to address if they can just box out Mitch was it Mitchell Robinson? If they could box out Mitchell Robinson. You box no out issue. Mitchell Robinson, what are you gonna do about Josh Hart? That's no problem. Three, I, two, I, I'm not I'm not worried about You're also you're also not, you're also not, not counting. Hart. No, 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 but look, you also to in order to win a game, you have to score more points than the other team. But you're also not counting how, Emmanuel quickly. The, you're not counting Jalen Brunson. So, you're not counting RJ Barrett. You're not counting I mean listen, listen. I mean you're you're focusing on Jalen Brunson, but okay, Jalen RJ Who are your shooters though? First one to Jalen RJ, Emmanuel, quickly. Let's not forget you Julius want, Randle will be back, you, you and you're not going to have a hard time. Three? You want me to give you what they're shooting from three? You want to go ahead and bring up a – not to hey, mention hey, – hey, Hold on, Quentin, hold on. Quentin, Quentin Grimes is coming back, and you Quentin don't want Grimes. that smoke with, Q, with Q Dot. Hold Quentin on, guys. Hold on, Corey. What's listen, up? you guys are tied 3-3 three, three right three, now. Three? This is like that show on ESPN. That, what's the show where the dude gives the – um, Oh, oh, um, Around the Horn? Around the Horn, you get the points, right? So it's 3-3 right now, the first one of five wins. Mm-hmm. Okay. I will, well, let, let me ask you this. Is three greater than two? I mean... Oh, Jack, three, you get three, a point for that. Than two, right? Corey, get a point for that. Three, what three, are you saying three greater than two? Oh, three greater than two. We know, we know where, what, what basketball is oh, at. We so know where basketball is at right okay. now. It's about the three-point shot. Who are your shooters? 
Who are I'm your look, shooters? I'm look, oh, I can tell you who our shooters okay, are. Okay, go ahead. Right now, I'm looking at the three-point percentage of all of, uh, of the guys that are in the rotation right now. Uh -huh. Jalen Brunson, he... No, 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 my fault. Josh Hart, your boy Josh Hart. Uh -huh. He has the highest three-point percentage. He's, and he's, but how many is he making? He's only making two threes per okay. game. Okay. What's that have to do with the mid-range? What's that have to do with driving it in the lane? Right, what does that have to do? If we want to go with how many points they're averaging What does that have to do with points over turnovers? Jalen Brunson's averaging 24 points per game. He's your leading scorer. The next leading scorer is who? But that's RJ because Barrett? you just said that. RJ Barrett? But I also just said that Julius Randle was shut down by Evan Mobley, who's a seven-footer. Last Randall time I checked, last time I checked, he doesn't get shut down by the Julius Randle's ankles hurt. Julius Ooh. Randall will be back in, in Corey, by, for that series. Is he going to be 100%? Ashley, that's a point, Ashley. I, I know for how I know how many possessions. I know <laughs> I have confirmed <laughs> this yesterday via the source himself. Uh -huh. He will be back. Oh right. shoot, she might, that should be uh, two hey. points, but I'm gonna give you four because I want to keep I it going. Just hope, Inside information. I just hope he plays Coleman. smart. I just hope he plays smart four. basketball, and I hope he's not trying to fill out his ankle. I just hope in the series. I just hope that everyone that you have on your payroll shows up because Jimmy can't play one versus five. That's all I'm saying. All in, all, I all our is, players show up when it matters. I'm just saying. All I know is Jimmy Butler shooting 45% from three. Gabe all Vincent, I know Gabe is. Shooting 50, 42 okay, this is what we're going to do. This the, is what we're going to do, Corey. Hold on. Go, this is what go, we're going to do. Go, it's 4-4 four, four right now. Mm -hmm. It's tied up. Um, I feel like we need to take it to vote. I think any, everybody is watching the show right now. Please get in the chat. We got more know. Heat fans in the chat, though. I'm going to lose. No, no. It's not about, that. It's about the art and science <laughs> of y'all Y'all take and y'all debate. Who won this debate that's what i want to know mm -hmm. was it Corey or was it ashley nicole moss please jump in the chat and let us know he i like six. this segment we need to keep this going he didn't six